elections have consequences, and we've seen some of the manifestations of that already in the recent elections and in some of the recent polls. Um, we've seen the, the consequences of those who said that they were something, get into office, cast their votes, and prove that they're something else. We won't forget those who promised to hold firm against government funding of abortion, but caved at the last minute in exchange for a non-binding executive order promised by the most pro-abortion president to ever occupy the White House. We will not forget. We won't forget, and come November, our new pro-life, pro-woman majority will actually be pro-life when it counts, when those votes are needed. But your work is more than just candidates, SBA. You act as a representative for all feminists who believe in the culture of life. Organizations like the Susan B. Anthony List are returning the women's movement back to its original roots, back to what it was all about in the beginning. You remind us that the earliest leaders of the women's rights movements, they were pro-life. Women like your namesake and like Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Sarah Norton and Alice Paul, who of course was the author of the original Equal Rights Amendment back in 1923, who said, she said abortion is the ultimate exploitation of women. Today, polling shows that more young women agree with these feminist foremothers than ever before and believe in that culture of life, empowering women by offering them a real choice. In fact, a Gallup poll showed recently that for the first time in 14 years, there are more Americans proudly proclaiming themselves as pro-life, understanding the sanctity of life and the need for a culture of life than ever before. The majority of Americans, and that's a huge victory. <laughs> Together, our pro-woman sisterhood is telling these young women that they are strong enough and smart enough, they are capable to be able to handle an unintended pregnancy and still be able, in less than ideal circumstances, no doubt, but still be able to handle that, give their child life, in addition to pursuing career and pursuing education, pursuing avocations. Though society wants to tell these young women otherwise, even these feminist groups want to try to tell women, send this message that, no, you're not capable of doing both. You can't give your child life and still pursue career or education. You're not strong enough. You're not capable. So that's very, very hypocritical of some of those pro-life groups, I mean pro-women um, uh, pro rights groups out there who would claim such a thing. And that's as opposed, again, to Susan B. Anthony List, other pro-life women groups who are saying, no, women, you are strong enough. You are capable of doing this. And if motherhood isn't an option, raising that, that child after you allow it, life, well then adoption is a beautiful choice and we need to pursue more opportunity in that arena. So even in less than ideal circumstances, these pro-life groups are empowering women, letting them understand that yeah, there's going to be some help and some support and resources out there for you in order to give your child life. And I understand those challenges in less than ideal circumstances. Um, I've been there. You know, I had never uh, ordered up, planned on being the mom of a son with special needs. You know, I thought, oh, you know, God will never give me something that I can't handle. And when I found out at about 12 weeks, weeks along through an ultrasound that, that my baby would be born with Down syndrome, I thought immediately, okay, God, remember, you, you, you promised us you will never give us anything that we can't handle. I, I don't think I can handle this. this. This wasn't part of my life's plan. I had no idea how I was going to handle the situation in um, raising a special needs child as a, a very busy governor, um, busy with four other kids, um, husband away uh, quite often commercial fishing and up on the north slope in the oil fields working there and just, you know, the circumstances not, and not knowing if my heart was ready, not knowing if I was uh, patient and nurturing enough. My sister has a child with autism and we've always said, see, God knew what he was doing. He, the autistic child would be for Heather, my sister Heather, because she is the more nurturing one. She'd be able to handle this. But when Trig was born then, um, 
I understood then that no, God does know what He's doing, and and what seemed like what would be such a challenge has turned into our greatest blessing. And I believe that one of the whispers in my ear during after that ultrasound and, and the weeks um, of the pregnancy, the months of the pregnancy, was God kind of whispering in my ear saying, are you going to trust me? And um, are you going to walk the walk? Or are you just going to talk the talk? And he so preparing my heart, though I didn't know that preparation was even um, being, being d- done in, in our family and in my heart, but the minute that Trey tri- was born and they lay him in my arms and he just kind of melted right on into my chest and he looks up at me and, and it was just like he saying, see, God knows what he's doing and this is going to be good and mom, he gave me to you and he gave you to me and this is going to be, this is going to be a wonderful journey and truly God's so overwhelming us with, with joy and the recognition of his perfection, Trig's perfection, has been nothing but blessing. And I so want to help other women who are in that situation, thinking these are less than ideal circumstances. What am I going to do about this? Maybe I can change those circumstances. Maybe this can all just go away and we'll pretend it never happened. I want to encourage these women, oh my goodness, give this life a chance. You will be blown away, overwhelmed. Your life will so change for the better in allowing the life of someone even with special needs, especially someone with special needs. Todd and I know that, and our family, we know that Trig will teach us more than we'll ever be able to teach him. He allows such awesome perspective on what really matters. And I think, too, in this political arena is, oh, all the stuff on the periphery that just wastes time and doesn't matter, doesn't, at the end of the day, the things that maybe are said in the media and the political pot shots. They don't amount to a hill of beans. Not when, not when Trig is there in our life, showing us this, this golden heart that I believe God would want all of us to embrace and to emulate with a child with special needs. I tell you, truly, Trig has been the best thing that has ever happened to me and to the Palin family. Yes. Bless you. Let me share quickly something that Trig does, too, that I think uh, the rest of us can learn from. He, uh, he, of course, having challenges, and he'll have challenges his entire life, probably greater challenges than the rest of us will have. But Trig, you can already see sort of this perspective in this child that I think the rest of us are supposed to understand and, and emulate, too. Trig, in the morning, he'll wake up. He's two years old now. He'll wake up, and he pulls himself up on the up to the top of the crib there. He looks around and he rubs his sleepy little eyes and even though the day is going to be challenging, he starts applauding. First thing in the morning, he looks around clapping like, woohoo, what you gonna, what you gonna do to me now? Like, and I, oh man, shouldn't we all? Shouldn't we all? That's what we're learning from our boy. But, um, my daughter, Bristol, too, she, she didn't expect to become pregnant at 17, and those were less than ideal circumstances. There, Bristol, um, having to endure, you know, some, uh, some public humiliation. It was, it, was, it was an embarrassing time for her, and bless her heart, they're out on a national stage, and she and the rest of the family saying, you know, this wasn't supposed to happen. No, you, you don't... You don't think that it will happen in, in your own family. And Bristol, though, being so strong and independent and knowing that choosing life was the right road, the right choice, she knew it wouldn't be easy, and, and it hasn't been easy. And society, culture, sure hasn't made it easy on her. And her message now being, hey, other teenage girls, don't do what I did. Th- this is not easy. You know, it was a premature ending of her adolescence. And, and it was, um, uh, it, you know, the, the beginning of a whole new life, absolutely living now for someone else. She living for her son. But, um, wow, our culture and the media has, has made it rough on her. And they're kind of sending a message, I think, to other girls that... Um, 
um, hey, it'd probably be easier if you just uh, abort your child and not have to go through what Bristol's going through. But Bristol, too, say, no, these are less than ideal circumstances. Her message now is don't do what I did. Abstinence is the only 100% foolproof way, of course, of preventing pregnancy.